Hello everyone and welcome back to Legally Blind. Leo, come here, come here, say hi. Oh, I gotta say hi. This is Leo, he is my new dog. He's a shepherd baladi mix and he's adorable. Okay, pups, you wanna go? You wanna go? Okay. Hit the like button if you just wanna see Leo again. Let me know in the comments too. Look at him. I have some very interesting information for you in this video. وللمشاهدين العرب حترجم الفيديو ده بالعربي في الآخر هلخص المحتوى وأقدمه بالعربي في الآخر. So if you are an English speaker, most of this video is in English. However, I will be translating bits of it and summarizing it at the end in Arabic. It's very important for me that all my viewers can understand this information because a lot of it is stuff I really did not know at all and a lot of it goes against what I have been told all my life. So if you have a retinal condition or you have a loved one who has a retinal condition, you really need to hear this. معظم الحاجات اللي بتقلنا من الدكاترة طول حياتنا لو, لو أي حد عنده مرض من أمراض الشبكية في العين عادة هتلاقوا الدكاترة بيقولوا إن دي حاجة ملهاش أي علاج أو أنها وراثية وبالتالي مفيش حاجة نقدر نعملها أو إن إحنا ممكن نعمل حاجات بسيطة جدا تحد من الأعراض ولكن مفيش حل قوي يعني فالفيديو ده ح so throughout most of our lives as people with retinal conditions, we have been told by medical professionals that retinal conditions cannot be treated. There's no known cure. Um, they cannot go into remission. They don't get better. They might get worse or they might stay where they are, but that they never get better. And the information I'm about to present in this video says that that might not actually be true. Disclaimer, of course, I am not a medical professional. The person who is speaking in this video is a medical professional. However, neither of us is trying to tell you that you know your, your doctors are wrong or your doctors are lying to you or that, that if you do certain things, your eyesight will definitely get better. None of that. However, we are simply presenting information for which there are sources, peer-reviewed sources and books that you can read and review for yourself. And there are medical centers, especially in the United States, that actually do follow these treatment methods. And um, some people have actually experienced improvement in their vision or at least very slow or non-existent progression in their retinal conditions by following these methods. Um, and I just want everyone to have this information because it might be useful. Um, I am a trained scientist and I have been trying to research my own condition for a long time and still I was not able to access this information for multiple reasons. However, now I know a bit more about it and I am excited to share the sources that uh, I have found and that the medical professional speaking in this video has found and um, you can just see them for yourself. video <laughs> هي دكتورة ولكن مش دكتورة عيون ولا أنا ولا هي بنقول إن مثلا الدكاترة بيكذبوا عن مرضى أو إن في مؤامرة لتخبية أو إخفاء المعلومات دي عن الناس ولكن كل اللي إحنا بنعمله هو إن إحنا بنعرض المعلومات دي والمصادر بتاعتها المصادر العلمية بتاعتها وأي حد عايز يطلع على المصادر دي يقدر يعمل كده so, this video is not actually visual at all. You can actually listen to it kind of like a podcast. It is a voice message from a German doctor. Again, not an ophthalmologist. She is simply a medical professional who is trying to 
uh, deliver information to the public in a simple way. And in the description below, I will leave some of her uh, social media things for you to look at. You are about to listen to this doctor speak about a treatment method for retinal conditions. And at the end of the video, I will summarize what she said in Arabic. And that's about it. So I will now leave you with Dr. Astrid's message, summarizing the multimodal, or I guess some people might call it holistic approach to treating retinal conditions. Dr. أسترت هي دكتورة ألمانية مش دكتورة عيون ولكن دكتورة بتحاول تجمع معلومات ومصادر وتلخصها بطريقة مبسطة وتكتبها في صورة مقالات وبتنشرها على السوشيال ميديا والناس تقدر تطلع عليها هي والمصادر بتاعتها التسجيل بصوتها كله باللغة الإنجليزية ولكن أنا في آخر الفيديو بلخص كلام اللي هي قالته وححاول أسيب لكم في الديسكريبشن تايم ستامبس لو يوتيوب هيسيبوني أعمل كده ولو أنتوا مش بتكلموا إنجليش ممكن تفوتوا الحتة اللي فيها التسجيل بصوتها وفي الآخر أنا هلخص المعلومات اللي هي قالتها Here we go Hi dear Maha, hello, how are you? You were asking me before in one of our other talks about how I came to be interested in retinitis pigmentosa as my original specialization is something different totally. And I told you that I was married to an Egyptian who is actually a patient of retinitis pigmentosa. So that was a quite new field for me. I didn't have much experience in ophthalmology except a uh, tropical ophthalmology course that I have been doing many, many years ago out of personal interest into tropical medicine. And uh, I saw a complete new field opening up and I saw that this field of retinitis pigmentosa, it's vast and it's deserted because there is not much information. And all the contacts with doctors that we had, especially here in Egypt, were quite frustrating because they always told us the same thing. They always told us, yeah, there is nothing you could do. There is no therapy. We are waiting, all of us, for new uh, results in gene therapy. Some studies are going on, there are some trials, but we don't have any useful results yet when it comes to RP specifically. Other eye diseases, okay, there are some results, but when it comes to RP, uh, we, there is not anything that we could offer to you. It is a very hopeless diagnosis and da 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 da. And I felt that my husband, he was always going into a very frustrated and uh, negative state after any contact with doctors. And I asked myself, is that so? Is it really like this? Who says that there is nothing? I mean, there must be something, something we can do. Yes, uh, the, the classical uh, medicine, university medicine that all the doctors study doesn't offer us anything against the development or the progress of RP. But aren't there any alternatives? Isn't there anything, even some, something very small, something tiny that could help us? So I started to research. And I was going, I was browsing the net over and over and over in the desperate search of a loving wife who just wants to, uh, to do something for her partner to, to keep him more healthy and more happy and more independent and yeah, to do something positive to preserve that precious, precious vision of, of his. And uh, I found some sources. I found some voices all over the net. I found some articles. I found some centers. I found some alternative voices. I found uh, people who are claiming that they are 
able to contribute a little piece of this big puzzle which can help in preserving vision. Let's call it like that. I don't want to speak about cure. I don't want to speak about freezing the situation because each and every patient has a totally different point to start from. Everybody has his own individual mosaic. Everybody has different genetic constellation, but there must be something. And I was collecting all the different information from different uh, places. And uh, that's what I have found out, that there can be a holistic approach. We have to think about several areas of our lifestyle. And yes, there are things we can do. And uh, it's not 100% promising. <clears throat> it's not valid for everybody. It doesn't work for everybody. But there is something and everybody is free to pick from that whatever he or she wants or can see as useful. Actually, it should be a multimodal approach to RP. It's not just one line, one thing. To achieve some improvement or remission of ongoing RP, you can play in several factors. It's like this. RP or all inherited retinal diseases are seen as a mix between genetics and autoimmune disease because everybody has his individual starting point of where the RP activity started in him, where he first time realized that there is something going on. Okay, And usually when you look at that moment, you will find that the patient had some stress Something was going on in the life. There was some other disease, some infection, or there was some shock, or there was some, some uh, allergy, some incident was happening and uh, something is, was going on. And then kind of the immune system of the patient was compromised. Okay, And then RP started. And uh, there is a multimodal approach, which is coming from several sites. It comes with nutrition, first of all. Nutrition has to be optimized. Second, antioxidants have to be taken, special kinds of antioxidants and omega-3 and such stuff. Third, oxygenation of the retina has to be improved. It has to be made better in whatever way because it's like a, a, an oxygen-deprived situation. And this is why also some patients develop new arteries inside their eyes and in, uh, in the back, uh, I mean, at, in the retina. They are developing new uh, vascularization. It's called neovascularization. This is the body trying to bring more oxygen, okay? And uh, this neovascularization, you can very well stop it with more oxygenation which can be for some time with the hyperbaric chamber. Okay, let's come back to the multimodal modal approach. So you want to get the oxygen up. So you need to do uh, some other stuff also. You need to move, you need to do exercise, you need to move your body to, make, to increase blood circulation. And also there are some other ways to increase blood circulation by acupuncture and also by what you are doing this um, uh, transcorneal uh, electrostimulation therapy, okay? This is also aiming at the same thing, more or less. So this is like giving a highlight to the retinas inside the whole system of the body. It's like you are highlighting it. Hey, oxygen has to go here. And then it's get, uh, getting better. And blood flow is getting better. And in, in RP, it's very important also to carry away all that toxic waste which is piling up. This all uh, lipofuscin granula and all that stuff, which gives us this uh, black um, spotted uh, impression and which can later calcificate and become real calcium. And, and, and then there will be these uh, spikes, which is not good because the more hardened, uh, the more it hardens, the dif more difficult it is to carry away, you know. So it would be good if like deporting the toxic waste uh, can be increased also and it's increased by blood flow. 
if there is more uh, blood activity going there, automatically it will be cleaned. Some of the treatments, they go also to lymphatic uh, drainage. That's especially if there is also macular edema or something involved for patients that have a problem with liquids. Let's put, break it down to simple words, okay? And um, what else can they do? Blue light protection, of course. Uh, people have to wear good uh, sunglasses outside and they have to wear good comp computer glasses to protect uh, their eyes from the harmful uh, blue rays. I have an article also in my group about the blue rays and about the glasses that are available. And what they are also um, suggesting is that uh, there is a strong relation also with the gut health. So we are back to nutrition and to the gut microbiome, you know. That's something that has been that has come up in, in the media in the last years quite well. Uh, there are a lot of videos and uh, talking about gut health and the microbiome. It's very, very important that we have the right bacteria. People have to think about to make a new edition for their gut uh, microbiomes. And I have done this several times and I have done this also with my patients in Europe uh, back then when I was treating uh, burnout. I had a private practice for one year treating burnout. I'm not only a pediatrician, but I had also some experience with grown-ups. Anyhow, so this is like a gut uh, revolution, yeah? Uh, because you need to have the proper bacteria in place to take in your nutrition. And if you don't have the proper bacteria, then your nutrition is not taken in to the max. It's not used to the best. And these other inadequate bacteria, they don't do the job. Plus, they do some stuff we don't like. And they are causing, for example, leaky gut syndrome. And this is causing a huge uh, alarm inside the immune system. And then the immune system becomes overactive. And once it becomes overactive, it will be very happy to attack whatever surface. And then it's also attacking the retinas. So it's a very complex thing. So to break it down, vision can uh, be improved. Yes, we don't know how, to which degree. It depends because everybody is an individual mosaic of his genetics and of his condition and of his onset and of his degree and two different eyes, you know. Uh, it theoretically and practically can bring back some vision and it is supposed also to stop the progression, to put the whole thing into remission. But that's really a multimodal approach that takes a lot of compliance from from side of the patient and takes a lot of uh, knowledge. It must be an educated patient who can realize what he or she is doing and uh, it's not easy to get. But the best centers for this, actually, it's in the United States. And uh, United States and Canada, they have excellent centers. Some centers in India, they're also doing the same thing. And all of them have the same elements. All of them are doing acupuncture. All of them are prescribing antioxidants. All of them are uh, giving omega-3. And all of them are doing more or less the same stuff, you know. Because it's all, it's about oxidation and waste. So oxidation must go up and waste must be transported to another place. And that's all. And uh, it depends really on each patient because we have so many different genetic constellations. Plus they are not yet sure uh, for, you know, you know your, well, yourself so well. Uh, it can be switched on on this one and switched off on that one. It's like a mosaic. So there's a lot of epigenetics happening, and it's a very, very complex thing. It cannot be said in general, but um, people who are really investing the time to first of all get conscient and to get the knowledge. And second, to do the things that are recommended step by step, plus, of course, sleeping well, 
not stressing yourself, not spending the whole time in front of screens, which is so difficult because all, all of us do it. But anyhow, um, all this together can bring RP at least into remission. Yeah. Maybe not forever, but maybe for 10 years. And at least we need something in our hands. It cannot be that doctors just tell us, no, we are sorry. It's uh, so sad, but we have to close the door in front of your face. And that's it. We have nothing to offer. No, it isn't. Actually, there's a lot to offer. But it takes a commitment from the side of the patient. You have to be active and you have to be positive and you have to research and you have to go out there and expose yourself and try things and uh, don't give up. You have to stay in a positive spirit, uh, which is sometimes quite challenging, especially in the situation of RP, where you have your downs and you have your power drops and you have your desperate phases, let's call it like this. And uh, sometimes it takes a partner on your side to motivate you and to be your cheerleader and to pull you and to push you. And that can be very useful if you have somebody around you. But at least there are things you can do. And that's just great. And how useful they are, everybody has to find out for, for himself. How challenging they are, it differs. It depends on your, your ability for lifestyle change or your, uh, your commitment to invest into your health. It depends on how we deal with our bodies and how much time we are ready to invest or how much care we are investing in our body's health and benefit and well-being. You know, the eyes are a sentinel. They are part of our uh, neurological system. They are the outer part. They are looking outside to this world and they are very complicated. It's a highly technological part of our body. Let's call it like this. And it's a very sensitive and high maintenance part of our body. And when we stress ourselves out and when we make ourselves very tired, we can feel it. Everybody is getting yeah, sore eyes and the vision becomes blurry. Even without RP, there is a lot of effects on your vision if you stress yourself out, if you don't sleep well. Uh, so the eyes are an indicator of your well-being. And your vision is a direct, clear indicator of your state of health. And I think this is a lesson we have to learn. And RP is our teacher in this. And I just have the desire to enable people again to take care of their own health, to be powerful again. Because the doctors tell to RP patients, you are powerless. It's not in your hands. It's not in our hands as doctors. It's just fate. And that's not a good message because it, it disables us. It disables everybody. It disables the patients. It disables the doctors. We used to hand over the responsibility for our bodies to the doctors. And in my opinion, we have to take over responsibility again. We have to take back responsibility. You have reached that far. You have found this dialogue. You have listened to all the info that we gave in this dialogue. So it's up to you now. What are you going to make out of that? The ball is in your playground. And uh, I wish for everybody who was listening to our dialogue that um, you found some inspiration in our words and you found out some possibilities that can be useful for you and that can be beneficial for your vision and for your eyes. And I wish all the best for everybody. Thank you for giving us all this attention and being with us. And uh, yeah, feel able be enabled don't don't allow to be disabled الكلام اللي سمعتوه دلوقتي باللغه الانجليزيه بيلخص حاجه اسمها الطريقه 
نقدر نقول الشمولية أو الكلية لمعالجة كل أمراض الشبكية الطرق دي قايمة على إيه بالظبط هي قايمة على إن كتير جدا من الناس اللي عندها أمراض متعلقة بالشبكية الدكاترة لاحظوا إنهم الأمراض بدأت تظهر عليهم أو الأعراض بتاعة الأمراض دي بدأت تظهر عليهم في أوقات غالبا كان في عليهم فيها ضغط كتير آه، ستريس ضغط نفسي ضغط آه، بدني آه، مرض آه، حاجة زي كده طبعا مش كل الناس ولكن كتير من الناس وكتير من الدكاترة بيعتبروا الأمراض بتاعة الشبكية دي إن هي مش مجرد حاجات وراثية ولكن إن في جزء منها متعلق ب auto immune diseases اللي هي الأمراض المتعلقة بالمناعة زي مثلا الحساسيات وأي أمراض تانية فيها الجهاز المناعي بتاع الجسم بيهاجم نفسه أو بيهاجم أجزاء تانية من الجسم فإيه هي المالتي مودل أبروتش دي أو الطريقة الشمولية أو كلية دي هي طريقة للعلاج بتهاجم المشكلة من كل النواحي يعني إيه بتهاجم المشكلة من كل النواحي يعني إحنا مش بس بنحاول نعالج الشبكية تحديدا إحنا بنعالج الإنسان كله وكل المشاكل اللي ممكن تكون عنده فأول نقطة بتتكلم عليها الدكتورة في التسجيل هو أكسجة الخلايا بتاعة الشبكية بنحاول نعمل كذا حاجة تزود الأكسجين اللي بيوصل لل شبكية والدورة تنشيط الدورة الدموية حوالين الشبكية عامة ليه وده إيه علاقته بأي حاجة أول حاجة طبعا إحنا عارفين إن أي خلية في الجسم علشان تأدي وظيفتها كويس لازم يبقى وصل لها أكسجين كفاية فده حاجة الحاجة الثانية إن في زي مخلفات بتتراكم في خلايا الشبكية مع الوقت وممكن مع الوقت كمان تنشف وتتحول إلى طبقة صعب جدا تنظيفها بعد كده من خلال الدورة الدموية فكل ما في دورة دموية صحية وكويسة حوالين الشبكية المخلفات دي بتتشال كويس والشبكية بتفضل تأدي وظيفتها كويس على قد ما تقدر فمن ضمن من ضمن الطرق اللي بتعلي الاكسجين في الشبكية هي الجهاز اللي انا اتكلمت عليه في الفيديو اللي قبل ده هسيب لكم اللينك بتاعه برضو لان هو بيبعت زي طيار كهربائي ضعيف للشبكية وده بينشط الدورات الدموية حواليها طريقة تانية هي الهايبربارك تشيمبر اللي هي الغرفة اللي فيها مش عارفة بصراحة اسمها ايه بالعربي ولكن هي غرفة فيها ضغط هواء اعلى بكتير من الطبيعي علشان تزود الاكسجين لخلايا الشبكية او لاي خلايا في الجسم محتاجة ده حاجات التانية اللي بتحسن الدورة الدموية عامة برضو بتكون كويسة جدا زي الرياضة والنظام الغذائي الكويس وده يجيبنا دي النقطة التانية وهي التغذية والتغذية هنا مش زي ما بنتكلم على التغذية في حاجات تانية هو الهدف هنا من التغذية الكويسة أو النظام الغذائي الكويس هو تحسين البيئة الميكروبية اللي في المعدة كلنا عندنا في معدتنا وفي أمعائنا أنواع معينة من البكتيريا وفي منها حاجات كويسة وفي منها حاجات وحشة وحسب إحنا بناكل إيه إحنا بنغذي يا إما البكتيريا الكويسة يا إما البكتيريا الوحشة لو إحنا نظامنا الغذائي وحش جدا وعندنا مشاكل في الهضم وعندنا على طول قولون في مشاكل وفي أي مشكلة تانية متعلقة بالتغذية والجهاز الهضمي ممكن تكون مأثرة على البيئة الميكروبية دي وده ممكن يبدأ رد الفعل بتاع جهاز المناعة اللي هو اللي احنا مش عايزينه ده لو في مشاكل في الجهاز الهضمي جهاز المناعي ساعات بينشط علشان يعالج هذه المشاكل وبالتالي الجهاز المناعي النشط زيادة عن اللزوم ده ممكن يهاجم أي حاجة تانية في الجسم حسب جينات الشخص ده بتقول له يعمل إيه وده طبعا ممكن يشمل خلايا الشبكية غير بقى التغذية والكلام ده كله في أي حاجة في حياة البني آدم بتزود السترس برضو ليها دور في الموضوع ده فلو حد مش بينام كفاية بيشتغل كتير قوي بيقضي وقت كتير قوي قدام شاشات مش بيعرف يستريح ويخلي باله من نفسه كل دي حاجات ليها دور فده باختصار 
معظم الحاجات اللي قالتها الدكتوره في التسجيل وكمان في حاجات صغيره زي مثلا طبعا حمايه العين من الاشعه فوق البنفسجيه فلازم نظارات شمس كويسه جدا وفي نظارات بتتلبس قدام الشاشات وحاجات زي كده ف باختصار شديد ويعني انا عارفه ان ده شيء صعب جدا ولكن كل ما ناخد خطوات بتحسن صحتنا بتقلل الضغوط في حياتنا كل ما بتكون فرص التعافي اعلى او على الاقل فرص ان النظر ما يزدادش سوءا او ان هو يثبت زي ما هو So there you have it guys all the information about the multimodal approach for treating um, retinal conditions. Doc also told me about Grace Halloran, PhD, uh, and her book, Amazing Grace. And um, I have a few pages from that book here. But anyways, when I'm, when I'm done reading this book, I definitely plan to make an episode about it. Grace Halloran was one of the pioneers of this multimodal approach, and she was able to treat her own RP and her child's RP and go into remission for at least 10 years or something before it started to get worse again for her. But you know, 10 years of good vision is, or better vision is, is not a small thing, right? So I think that the human body has a lot of great potential for healing itself. And, and this amazing ability of the body to heal itself is still very much poorly understood and we've only tapped a little bit of it. So as difficult as it might be to be that healthy and um, do all of the things that are required to follow this multimodal approach, I think it's worth a shot. Even if it ends up not doing very much for your eyesight, you're still going to be an overall healthier person, so why not? I will leave the link to that book in the description below as well. من ضمن المصادر اللي الدكتوره قالت لي عليها برضو هو كتاب كتبته الدكتوره جريس هالوران اللي هي من اوائل الناس اللي بداوا يبحثوا في الطريقه دي للعلاج وهي نفسها كان عندها ريتينايتس بيجمنتوزا او ار بي وبنتها او ابنها كان عنده ار بي ومن خلال الطريقه دي قدرت ان هي تحسن نظرها ونظر بنتها او ابنها لفتره طويله جدا، بالنسبه لها هي نظرها تحسن لمده 10 سنين ودي طبعا حاجه حلوه جدا حتى لو النظر هيتحسن لفتره فقط وبعدين يرجع يبقى وحش تاني، 10 سنين فتره مش قليله ودي حاجه حلوه جدا. الطب عامه والعلم مدرك ان قدره الجسم على شفاء نفسه قدرة كبيرة جدا واحنا لسه مش فاهمينها خالص وعشان كده حاجة زي كده تستاهل التجربة وتستاهل المحاولة وعلى الأقل حتى لو في الآخر الطريقة دي ما عملتش حاجة قوي للعين هي على الأقل هتخلي الشخص صحته كويسة جدا حاجات مثلا زي الـ الـ البيئة الميكروبية في الجهاز الهضمي دي حاجات أثبت علميا إن ليها تأثير كويس جدا على الصحه النفسيه والعقليه مين مين يكره ان هو يبقى صحته احسن عامه بصرف النظر عن النظر <تصفيق> that's it everyone i hope this has been really helpful for you as always please like comment subscribe and share this video with anyone who might need it whether english speaking or arabic speaking thank you so much to my patrons who continue to support me and uh, i will see you next time. شكرا ليكم يا ريت تدوسوا لايك وسبسكرايب وتنشروا الفيديو مع اي حد ممكن يستفيد منه واشوفكم تاني قريب شكرا